This is Dr. Ron's Words of Wisdom, words on leadership, goal setting, productivity, and a whole lot more. I trust that today you will consider this your vitamin or your supplement for your heart and mind. And wherever you receive podcasts from, would you please subscribe to Dr. Ron's Words of Wisdom? And if you would please leave a rating or brief written review, it is very, very helpful. Today, it's episode number 95, Important Things That I Do Every Day. Uh, the impetus for this podcast came from my buddy, Sam Crawley, who has been my coach and is also a podcaster himself, who in response to something I put on Twitter, I believe it was yesterday, said, Ron, what are the essential things that you do every day? day that you think a leader should do and, and just kind of delineate them. So Sam, this is uh, for you. I hesitate to give you the number. It's somewhere in the neighborhood of nine essential things, but they are not that difficult to get done. But the, the reason that I'm doing this podcast is what are the things that if you do and you do them consistently, will move the needle, will get you toward your goal, will get you to where you're desiring to be. And so the very first one that I would list is have a morning routine. My morning routine is I just straight copied it from um, Hal Elrod's book, The Morning Miracle. And I have a tweaked it a little bit so that it fits me. He has an acrostic that's called Savers. S-A-V-E-R-S. I get up a little earlier than I used to get up a few years ago, and I go through them. Now, the first two, S and A, stand for, in his system, silence and affirmation, and the third one is visualization. I kind of compress them all together in my way of doing it. You'll have to make it so that it fits your lifestyle, I do take a moment of silence. When I first get up, I drink some water uh, so that I can get uh, hydrated. I do some silence for a moment, but I incorporate the silence, the affirmations, the visualization. It is the time that I do my Bible reading and my prayer. I'm using a, a particular Bible that takes you through in a year, and then I have a prayer list, and so that, that's part of that. Um, one of the areas in his savers uh, is exercise. I make exercise a whole another category, and I will, before the day is over, before the morning is over, uh, go to the gym. I go to the local YMCA and exercise. Exercise has changed my life. It's not only helped me physically, but it, it helps me uh, mentally and emotionally as well. And if you are in a high-stress kind of a position, you can't afford not to exercise. Uh, as we go on down with savers, the E stands for exercise. The R stands for read. And depending on how much I'm going to be able to allot that day to my morning ritual, I'll read anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes at that time. I use a Kindle so I don't have to hunt and search for my book. I just open it up. It's bookmarked where I left off and, and that will, will help me. Because um, of the way that Hal came up with this, he makes the S stands for scribing, which really means journaling, writing in a journal. And for me, that's when I do my journaling. I, use, I have used a couple of electronic devices lately. One is called Penzu, P-E-N-Z-U. It is free. Um, I've also used day one at, at a time. I, I'm a member of something called 750 Words. It's $5 a month. But it, the goal is you're to write a minimum of 750 words a day. And that happens to be what I'm using right now. It kind of motivates me to do that. Whatever you choose and whatever methodology you have, you need to develop a, uh, an early morning routine. And I've chosen that one. You, you can tweak it however you would like to, as I've done. So that's really number one. It's a morning routine. And as you can see, there are a few different items that are part of my morning routine. Also during that morning routine and very early, I review my goals. 
As a matter of fact, uh, five out of seven days that I write in my journal, I write out my goals, both my yearly goals and my long-term goals, because this helps get it deeply embedded into my heart and mind, and it's always on my mind. That's the problem with, with most people. They may even write down a goal or they have a goal in mind, but they never think about it, they never do anything. They think somehow there was something just magical or mystical by coming up with a goal and then they just uh, leave it. So have a time every day, I mean every day, where you review your goals. You keep it ever before yourself. It's right there where you can see it. And as you're, it will help you. It serves as sort of a, a plumb line as you're deciding what you're going to do today. How will this affect what I am trying to get accomplished in my life? Now, as I was reflecting on Sam's question to me, uh, the other thing that has really kicked things up for me is I have three, some have four, some have five. Every evening I list what are the three strategic activities, the most important tasks, I call them MIT, that I have to do so that if uh, the world falls apart or there's an emergency in my life, if I get these three things accomplished tomorrow or on this day, that will help. And sometimes they're small little things. Sometimes it's larger, working on larger projects. And what I do in that morning routine is I begin always to work on whatever the most significant one is. Therefore, if I can get into the office or get about my day already having completed one of the important tasks, now, my friends, I do more than three things in a day, but three things that are going to move me forward, propel me into my future, and a minimum one of them has to be related to my goals. This is the idea. This is the reason most people never accomplish a goal. They come up with the goal. They never think about it, never meditate on it, never try to figure out how they're going to get there, and they don't do anything in their daily life to move them toward that goal. So make sure that one of your important tasks is to do, is to is goal related. Now I have other things that I need to do and I'll and I will work to get them done as many as possible. But there are 3 that I commit to and here's the commitment I make. I will not go to bed tomorrow evening until those 3 things are done. Now, let me tell you another thing that you may overlook as being something essential leaders in getting done, and that is the fact you need to eat a good diet and you need to be hydrated uh, throughout the day. Don't be skipping meals. Don't be just eating junk food. Make sure you take care um, of your body and your time. Um, that would be the fourth one. The fifth thing that I do every day is I be, have begun to work in time blocks. There was a time in my younger life when I bought into the myth of multitasking and I just lay it all out there on my desk and I would have all of those things that I was trying to get accomplished and working at them. And there really, in my opinion, is no such thing as multitasking. So now using the Pomodoro method, I have um, a gizmo on my computer, on my focus that helps me focus in blocks of times. I've gotten it perfected down to where I work in 25 minute blocks of time with a five minute break in which I either get a coffee, go to the bathroom, whatever I need to do, just rest my mind and then I come back. There was a time earlier when I would work in one uh, hour to 90 minute blocks, that, that's too long. And so if there's a longer uh, effort that I need to give that day, I'll work in a couple of 25 minute increments, 50 minutes, and I have done as many as three on a particular project with the five minute uh, goals. Then I move to the next task. I set my timer for 25 minutes. And then after I've done about four or five of those in a row with five minute breaks, I'll take a 15 to 20 minute break. It does a couple of things for me. It has helped me to fight the battle and to win with procrastination. When I hear that uh, buzzer begin, the timer start, and it doesn't have to be anything elaborate, you can use a kitchen egg timer. It doesn't matter. 
just as long as you work. But I have found working on one thing in a block of time, I am able to do exponentially more than I could when I was just multitasking and jumping hither, thither, um, and, and yon. So work in time blocks has had a significant impact on my productivity throughout the day. Um, I say the next thing I do is find a time that day to give gratitude. Now, as you all know, I'm a Christian, and so I want to offer gratitude and thanksgiving to, to the Lord. But find somebody to either write a note, send an email, send a text, have a conversation, and thank them for their contribution to your life, for their faithfulness, whatever it might be. It, it just sort of changes your mindset. It's just a positive thing to do to give, uh, to share gratitude with someone else. Uh, throughout the day, you have to have some downtime. You have to play or relax, or when you get your work done, it, it's okay to relax. That That's important. Now, the next one that I, I wanna say is, as the day is coming to an end, sit down and review your day. Uh, if you know this morning that you are going to review your day later this afternoon or early this evening, and you're going to look at what was effective, what wasn't effective, what what tripped me up today, where did I waste time, that likewise will keep you focused. I, I think one of our problems, leaders, is we just go through doing work and minutia of our lives, and we never reflect on, am I doing the things that are really going to significantly move me forward? So review your day and reflect on it. Did I use my time wisely? Was I effective or efficient? Did I waste too much time talking with coworkers? Did I bunch up uh, things that I shouldn't have been doing? Did I not allow enough time or a lot enough time to get done the significant things that I needed to do? It's not just enough to review your goals and to think about what you're gonna do that day and set your most important tasks. It's also important to review. That alone has really had a significant impact in my own personal productivity. Reviewing my day, looking through my journal, and I, I have a, a shout out to Brendan Bouchard. I'm using his goal setting kind of a journal notebook type of deal that's a two page. And at the end of the day, I can look at that. It tells me what I did, what worked and what didn't work. Don't get on yourself and become overly harsh if it didn't work, just make the, the adjustments. And until you review at the front end and review at the back end of your day, these will be bookends that keep you from getting too far off the rails and going in a wrong direction. So review your goals early in the day, but review your day later in the day, and those will both help you. Just as I am a firm believer in morning rituals, um, the last one that I'm going to give you is I'm a big, big believer in having an evening ritual. Many of us mindlessly watch too much television, play too many video games, and surf the internet for far too long. What I'm doing in these days is an hour to an hour and a half before I go to bed, I turn all the screens in my house off. It just helps me to get uh, my mind a little clear of all of the distractions. My evening ritual is simply, I look at my calendar. Now, again, I incorporate a little Bible reading and prayer and even a little other kind of reading into that. But I look at my calendar because I discovered some time ago, if I just have a task list, it'll get longer and longer and less things will get done. But I get, I look at my calendar and if they're important, those significant three activities, I put them on my calendar. So I'll look at my calendar to determine, am I going to be in meetings? Do I have appointments tomorrow that I have to be prepared for? Do I have files? Do I need to look for things? I don't want to go. One of the problems in most meetings, we all come into them cold and it takes us 15, 20, 30 minutes if just random visiting one another to get on track. Don't want to waste people's times, uh, their time, so I have to be prepared. Then I look at what I'm trying to get accomplished. I also review my goals again in the evening. And I determine what are, I know these maybe are the eight or nine things that I'd like to get done tomorrow, but what are the three most important that 
if I don't get anything else done, but if I get these three done, I feel like I've had a significantly good day. I identify, I identify those three the night before, and then I will begin working on them uh, in the morning. I go to bed probably a little earlier than most of you do because you need kind of a routine, but I have an evening ritual that prepares me. Um, I do things that people laugh at. I've shared this all my life. I lay out my clothes the night before because I don't want to get up in the morning and have to decide what I'm going to do. I pack my gym bag. I pack the clothes that I'm going to wear that day. I make sure that my briefcase or my book bag is filled with what it needs to do. And it is going to be exactly what I need for that day. And I don't have to get up in the dark in the morning and wonder where everything is. I have already taken care of it. So when I get up in the morning, I'm back to where I started that day. I can go right into my morning rituals. I have a place in my house where I do my morning rituals that I don't hardly do anything else in that room. And that helps me immensely. So remember leaders, you need to come up with a morning routine I would uh, direct you toward The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod. I think that's a good place to start. Make sure early in the day you review your goals. Identify what are your three most important activities you need to do. Eat properly, hydrate. I highly recommend working in time blocks. Make sure that you offer gratitude and thanksgiving. Take time to play and relax. You can't just work. Then make sure that you review your day and reflect what went well, what can I improve, and then make sure you instill an evening ritual. We're not talking about something that takes hours on end. It can be a few moments. And I believe you'll discover if you do those things, you'll see an improvement in the productivity of your life. You've been listening to Dr. Ron's Words of Wisdom, words on leadership, goal setting, productivity, and a whole lot more. I hope that you will consider this your vitamin or supplement for your mind and heart. And again, my friends, wherever you receive podcasts from, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, and so on, it's nearly everywhere. Would you go and uh, subscribe and leave a review and a brief written review? It would be so helpful if you'd rate and review it. And until next time, this is Dr. Ron saying, Leader, you're doing better than you think you are. Make sure you're doing things that are moving you forward. And until next time, Dr. Ron saying, have a great and blessed day.